Alright guys, so I noticed some interesting differences in the Blue Shift Hazard course from the Half-Life Hazard course. And, yeah, as you can see there, I had some interesting issues with my mouse the first time trying to record this. And I had to switch it to connecting to the raw mouse data. Don't know what was up with that, but I just, like, I couldn't do anything suddenly. It was really weird. Anyway, um, actually let me completely shut the door. Let me just do that real quick. Alright, so as you can see, Blue Shift d also has the invisible walls around the rims of stuff that Half-Life Source does not, and there's a few weird things about Blue Shift that I noticed, and I actually, I noticed also the whole area underground in that spot right there that was in Half-Life Source, is also in the other games, even though you can't get down there, and the ladder and the door don't even do anything. It's really weird. So, here's where the first difference is. You absolutely, positively cannot get through this part right here without doing what, it's, what you're supposed to do. That's really weird, I know. I'm not, I'm not even sure why they did that. But... However, you can you can still pull that trick off right here because you don't have to go around the edge. You just jump on the first jumping thing and then jump to the crouching one. I know that's a really weird change they made. I don't even know why they did that, but still. It could have just been accidental. And also right here, you cannot get past these without doing what, it's supposed to, what you're supposed to do. So that's interesting. So, There's some of the weirdest changes in Blue Shift. So, and right here, it is difficult, but still possible, to hurt yourself. And by difficult, I mean, I didn't get it until actually in this video. Like... I actually couldn't do it until while I was shooting this video. Like, I just suddenly was able to do it, so. Like that. That's how, that's how you do it, and I'm not even sure exactly how I managed to do it, but. Yeah. Fail. I, like, it didn't even jump right there. And that one wasn't quite as ridiculous of a fail. Yeah, that jumping portion in Blue Shift is a lot harder. Not a lot harder. It's a little harder. And all the weird things you can do in this room, can't do them because of lack of the long jump module. See? Because you just... It doesn't do anything when you try to use the long jump module in this game. So I just do it completely normally. Um... Not really much to say here. Just stupidly long, boring part right here. But, while we are here, um, is there anything I can actually talk about? Hmm. I'm trying to think. There's not really a whole lot that I can say. I oftentimes just talk as a filler for these kind of parts, but. Well, you know, still. Anyway, this is interesting because, of course, I used the long jump module in normal Half-Life to bypass this part, but you don't actually have to do that. You can just jump and land right on the edge of the bridge, and you can make it that way. And this is another one I didn't get until during the video. I didn't think it was possible to skip this gap either, but push the box out of the way, and like crouch jumped at the exact right moment and vaulted just straight over. Um, in Half Life, it's very hard to do without the long jump module, but. And this one, for some reason, that box is taller. 
Like, in Blue Shift, that box right there is taller than it was in Half-Life, so you can't really get on top of it. See, I, I try right here, and I can't do it. Like, it's just not possible. So. Then. I just try a couple times, jumping off of the button, and I make it. And smash the roach along the way. How lovely. Never mind, I tried quite a few times. Forgotten how hard it was to do. And some of the stupidest slope physics in Half-Life. I don't know if you saw that right there. Finally, I made it. And this is just a funny one I noticed. Watch this. I'm gonna push that box into the spot where you're supposed to push it. Just casually floating there. No, no big deal. No big deal at all. But anyway, you still can jump up on that. Like that. And yes, this part's... This part's still there. However, the lights are floating. I don't remember noticing that in the other games, but it might have been that way in the other games. Again, no long jump module, but this part, I noticed you can still do some crazy parkour to get across without using your flashlight. Boom. Boom. It's kind of cool there. And so, not really a whole lot interesting in the firing range, although there is something here that I would like to show. Right after I just bust all the tables here, whoop you do. And, anyway. Notice that the text is overlapping right there. Like, there's two different sets of instructions for some reason. One was from a later update of the game, and the other one's from the original update. And they're kind of overlapping right there. Whoop you do I accidentally pushed quick load. <laughs> and so I had to... Oh boy, that was dumb, but hey. Anyway... Um, one problem I was having in this version um, is randomly hits wouldn't register on the targets. So that happened several times. Not in this video, but they did happen. It does happen several. It did happen several times to me. And there's two rats to brutally murder in Blue Shift. And I thought there was only one. So ha ha ha! Take that, rats. And so, there's the target range completed. And yes, the bug where you can hurt yourself super duper bad right here, that's still there. So. Nothing really special about this part, except... Um, when I played it the first time, when I was just looking at all the bugs, you don't actually have to go above the water right there for, the do for those doors to open. The trigger zone is slightly below. And yes, you can still get yourself one point of damage right there. whoop do you do I also noticed that pillar where the HEV charging unit was. That's still there, of course. It's useless, but it's still there. Really weird. And so, same avoidances right there. However, this one's a little easier for some reason. When you don't have the long jump module, just slam your face into it and move left and you don't take any damage. If you recall when I was doing the Half-Life 1 video, that text right there, that wasn't localized and it said HZ Weapon Strip or something. Um, of course, in Blue Shift, as you can see there, it is localized. Here's, a fu here's another funny one. You can get the scientist from his office instead of the one who you're supposed to grab, and he will also unlock the door for you. Very similar to 
how in Half-Life Source you can get the other security card as well. And you can get them both to follow you outside a tiny bit. So that's kind of funny as well. This is an interesting difference. So, you know how the target zone, you could walk down below the train and still trigger the end game thing? Well, doesn't matter where you are, it does not activate in blue shift when you're not next to the train or on the train. So, you actually, if you send the train off without you, you have to climb back up and electrocute yourself on the railing a bunch of times and make your way and jump on top of the train for it to end the level. It's really weird. But, you know. Ugh, I'm really tired. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. I think I'll also finally be putting the hazard course to rest, so don't worry about that either.